topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Draw me close to you Never let me go And lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm a friend Good day. The Almighty Creator desires a deep personal relationship with you. My name is James Robertson. I'm a researcher, publisher, and teacher regarding the matters and truths of the Almighty Creator, whose true name is Yah, the Eternally Self Existing. I've been actively serving Him since 1993, over 31 years. If you're not actively serving Yah, then by default you're serving Satan. My objective is to show you how you can make a big difference on earth and qualify for a position of high esteem in heaven for eternity. It's important to understand that as a believer, just being good is not the point. It is relationship with Yah that counts. Without this, you will be in a very unpleasant place in heaven with no way out. My aim is to show you how to get close. If you're a good person without a clear relationship with Yah, then you're in a spiritual no-man's land and will not enter heaven when you die. The Creator has said regarding unbelievers, Why would I want someone to spend eternity with me when they do not believe I exist? Yah is calling everybody on the planet to be involved and serve Him and help Him to have victory over Satan. My goal is to show you how to do this. Fundamentally, we each need to to learn to see things on earth from Yah's perspective, and my aim is to teach you how to do that. Please visit my website at www.entimeissueministries.org or email me on james at entimeissueministries.org for more information. Happy to help you. Glad to be great to hear from you. Today we're going to talk about prayer to be anointed or filled with the set apart, incorrectly Holy Spirit of the Creator. <clears throat> Overview of the broadcast. When a person first comes to belief in the Almighty Creator, whose true name is Yah, as in Yah, the Eternally Self-Existing, which describes Him, Yah imparts a portion of His Spirit into the new believer. For this reason, this is referred to as the set-apart Spirit, because Yah sets apart a portion of His Spirit to help and guide that person. This broadcast will address that point, and then finally we will look at the state of your relationship with the Almighty Creator. I'm going to start off with the article 2024-0707, Prayer to be anointed, in brackets, filled with the set-apart, incorrectly Holy Spirit of the Creator. When a person first comes to belief in the Almighty Creator, Yah imparts a portion of His Spirit. There's a huge amount of wrong thinking with this Holy Spirit. Holy is an absolutely meaningless word. The Hebrew is set, means set apart. The Hebrew word is Kodesh. It means set apart, separated. Yah takes a piece of His Spirit, and when you believe, He sets it apart to you. That's what it means. And until that happens, you're a servant to Satan. Once you've believed... It's there forever unless you destroy it by outright rebellion and sin. So the set-apart spirit remains in the believer forever, even after they die, unless they're rejected for repeated unrepented sin. This is also the portion of Yah that judges the person when they die, when they come before the judgment seat of the set-apart spirit of Yah. For a detailed example of the walk of cleansing and renewal that occurs after death, read the final quest, starting at chapter 5. 
This is referred to as a betrothal portion and it's fixed. There's a whole lot of wrong thinking about the so-called judgment seat of Christ. People think it's the judgment seat of Jesus. No, it's not. Christ is another meaningless religious word, which correctly means one anointed with the spirit of Yah or the anointing of the spirit of Yah. So the judgment seat of Christ is the judgment seat of the set apart spirit of Yah. It's the judgment seat of the spirit of Yah inside you when you come before the judgment seat. And that spirit knows everything about you. It knows everyone you know. It knows every mistake you made. It knows every sin you committed from the moment that you first believed. And it, that spirit leads you down a journey in the judgment hall to meet people, some of whom you wronged in this life, some of whom you esteemed in this life, whatever, but help you to strip away the veils and get free of your wrong thinking so when you come before the judgment seat, you have a clear idea of what you're being judged for. And it's so important to get this right, folks. This, these wrong words, meaningless words, have so many wrong connotations attached to them. There is a second infilling of the same set-apart spirit, <clears throat> a reinforcement, an elaboration, an expansion that occurs when a believer specifically asks to be filled and takes the necessary measures to be filled, specifically immersion in a body of clean water, coupled to repentance for sin and request for cleansing of the defilement associated with sin, and then infilling. For a dramatic example of this, refer to the immersion of Yahushua, incorrectly Jesus, in the Yarden or Jordan, in Matiyahu, incorrectly Matthew 3.16. After Yahushua was baptized, he came up immediately out of the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he, Yahuchanan, incorrectly John, saw the Spirit of Yah descending as a dove and lighting on him. That's Yeshua. It was this anointing with the Spirit of Yah that equipped and empowered Yahushua to perform miracles, walk on water, raise the dead, and speak authoritatively. This anointing is available to every believer who asks for it. If you don't ask, you don't get. It's just like that. If you ask, and you keep asking, and you keep worshipping, and you're saying, Father, fill me with your spirit. Father, fill me with your spirit. I love you, Daddy. Fill me with your spirit. The more you do that, the more he will come to meet you, the more he will fill you. The closer you'll get to him, the more clearly you'll hear him, and you will get to a point where in due course you can start to perform miracles, heal the sick, and so forth. It's a journey. You also come to a place where he speaks through you as a so-called prophet, a spokesman. A prophet's another meaningless word. A spokesman or spokeswoman. One can ask for this infilling the instant you come to belief. See the web page, The Essence of Critical Actions on First Belief, which was discussed in last week's broadcast. One can ask for this infilling at any time after coming to belief. It's a free gift and it can be progressively enhanced and strengthened through worship, fasting and increasing the depth of relationship with Yah. It can also be destroyed by anger, treachery, betrayal by a life partner and so forth. Folks, it's a precious jewel. It's a pearl of great price. This is the essence of one's relationship with you. This is what we were created for. There's a space in our spirits designed for this infilling of the spirit of you. If you treat it tenderly and gently and respectfully and esteem it, esteem him, it will grow in you. The more you worship, the more it will grow. 
the more you tell him you love him, the more it will grow. And whatever you do of the opposite, it will shrink. He's gentle, he's loving, he's kind. Don't be rough with him. Don't be harsh with him. Don't be rebellious with him. Don't hold on to your sins. If you've shown sin, repent immediately. Turn around. Go in the opposite direction. Don't hang on to the sin. I recently had an experience with a very mature believer, quite close to Father, where she got into some wrong thinking, believed a lie, got very attached to that lie, to the extent that it broke in large measure her relationship with a man who was very close to her. And in the process of holding on to the lie and going on and on about the life week after week, she diminished her relationship with Yah and she didn't even realize it. It's tragic, folks. You must treat the anointing with deep respect and esteem. In worship, regarding worship, see the web page recommended worship. It's up under the home page at the top left of the website. For a discussion of some recommended songs and guidance, also see the web page recommended worship updated 20th of April 2024 which includes links to play and download approximately 50 recommended songs. The more one worships, the stronger the anointing becomes. I recommend one or two hours a day with the above songs. These have been carefully curated. There are a lot of songs out there that contain error and should be avoided. Songs that worship Jesus should be particularly avoided. I recommend having a small MP3 player with earbuds so you can listen to worship songs at every opportunity and also play those songs in your car in the sound system in your house day in and day out. They're powerful prayers that will come to fruition in your life in time if you keep it up. Just play the songs on the mobile phone if that's the only sound system that you have. Fasting. Fasting is an essential element of getting close to Father Yah and strengthening one's anointment. Anointing. See the web page, The Importance of Fasting. Will you join me? As a starting point, I advocate seven three-day water-only fasts at weekly intervals with the bread and wine of the covenant meal, incorrectly called communion, morning and evening, with a clearly stated objective. See the web page, Prayers to Rehearse the Covenant Meal, in brackets, in strikeout, communion, for forgiveness of sin and protection for basic prayers, and then while drinking the wine or red grape juice, pray for the objectives of your fast. It is possible to practice much stronger fasting, such as three seven-day water-only fasts uh, with a covenant meal morning and evening, or 21-day fast with only fruit or soup, only soup or similar, or water only. Folks, if you have never fasted, I'm not talking about a hunger strike and I'm not talking about fasting for cleansing, etc., for health or whatever. <clears throat> the value of a fast is determined by why you do the fast and what you pray while you're fasting. One of the reasons that I advocate taking the bread and wine morning and evening, I'm talking small helpings. I am on medication. I can't take the medication on an empty stomach. That's why I started doing it. And then I realized there's a lot of power in <clears throat> taking the, the wine and, and then praying your objective, saying, Father, I dedicate this fast to you. I ask you to fill me with your spirit, and I ask you to help me to draw closer to you. Or I help you, ask you to help me to come into all truth. I counseled somebody over the weekend who's battling with pornography, I said do seven three-day fasts and make the objective of the fast to completely eliminate your sex drive when you're not with your wife and have her do the same. They're living apart. He's over in the UK. She's in South Africa. 
and they're both battling with pornography. There's a, a very stern article on pornography on the website if, if that's something that you have issues with. If one really wants to get close to Father and have real impact, then a 40-day water-only fast with limited covenant meal is essential. This is the fast that Yeshua, Yahushua embarked on without the covenant meal before he commenced his ministry and that empowered him to perform the miracles he performed, healing the sick en masse, raising the dead, walking on water, feeding the 5,000, etc., etc. Refer to Matiyahu 4, verses 1 and 2. Then Yahushua was led by the set-apart spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights, he became hungry. Read the whole of Matiyahu to get a sense of what is possible when one is totally filled to full potential. I've done a series of 10 broadcasts on the book of Matiyahu, the first book of the New Testament in the Bible. My rendering uh, with correction of the translation errors that you hear me correcting here and commentary. Um, <laughs> I like to think it's quite a useful teaching, so you might want to go there and listen to the whole set. But all of this is available if you choose to seek it. If you choose to seek it. You can walk in the same power and authority as Yeshua or any of the major emissaries or prophets. If you seek it and do what is required, there's much on the website to help you with this. Folks, I really want to stress this point. Yahushua did what he did because he walked in the fullness of what was available from Yah. He was 100% a human being. He said before he died, I go to be with the Father. Because I go to be with the Father, you will do greater works than I have done. You can do greater works than Yeshua did if you make up your mind to do it. I was going that way, went through a brutal divorce, got very angry, destroyed the anointing. Can't re Once you've lost an anointing, you can't get it back. As I said, it's a precious gift. So I lost it. So I can talk authority, authoritatively about the anointing out of desire that you can go on and complete what I was unable to complete. And then for detailed guidance, please see the web page, Seven Components in Growing Close to Yah. Also top left of the website under the home page. Hover over the home page, there's a little drop down arrow to the right of home, and there is a collection of articles there. You'll find a lot of information there. Folks, my heart's desire is that you and everybody who's listening to this broadcast, whether it's live today or whether it's a recording that you listen to later, my desire is that you'll get this message, that you'll do what you need to do, and that one day, you will start to heal people and perform miracles and that you'll grow in that and start to have an impact on the people around you. There was a, a man in Nigeria about 20, 25 years ago who went into seclusion in the jungle and eventually came out walking barefoot on the dust he was so anointed that people were getting healed just by touching the imprint of his foot in the dirt. It's available, folks. The only thing that's getting in the way is you. So a prayer for anointing, for infilling, 
the spirit of Yah. Pray along the lines. And folks, I want to stress, this is not a recipe prayer. This is an example. Pray whatever comes to you. Father Yah, I ask you to fill me with your spirit, to pour out your spirit upon me. Anoint me and fill me with your spirit so that I can serve you more effectively. Pray that every day. Pray it morning and evening. Go on a fast. Make that the focus of your heart. Father Yah, I ask you to fill me with your spirit, to pour out your spirit upon me. Anoint me and fill me with your spirit so that I can serve you more effectively. Therefore, after sing along with worship songs that speak to being filled with the Spirit, constantly give thanks to Yah for filling you. Raise your hands. There's another page on the website, Experiencing the Anointing. How does it manifest? Also, how to become an anointed one when filled with the Spirit of the Almighty, as well as a challenge for you to seek a power anointing in ministry. Folks, all of this is around fundamental goal for you to do greater works than you sure did. And if that's not your aspiration, what, what is your aspiration? Do you want to just potter along and get to heaven and say, oh, goodness gracious, look at that. That guy's sitting on a throne. I thought I was better than him. How do you make it onto a throne? And I'm here two-thirds of the way to the back of the throne room. <laughs> Folks, it's up to you. I'm sharing the recipe. And it's not a recipe, it's just guidelines. And nurture the anointing. Father cannot tolerate sin. So it is vital that you clean up your life together with seeking to be filled fully. It's permissible to take a highly anointed person as a role model. Pray, Father, I desire to know you the way whoever knows you, knew you. Please anoint me as they were anointed. If you really want to go all out, ask to be filled like Yeshua. Yahushua is the example, the role model, and is not Yah. He was fully human, filled with the Spirit of Yah. It was the anointing on Yeshua that performed the miracles. But if you're immature and you're not ready to walk in that level of power and authority, I would suggest you don't do that one. Back in 1994, 2nd of January, I read the book, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. And don't come at me with stuff about Benny Hinn. I'm not interested in where he may or may not be today. At that time, he was close to Father. And I'd seen him minister, I'd seen the power he ministered. I'd read the book. I was touched by his testimony of his encounter with the set of spirit. I lay flat on my face in my bed at three o'clock in the morning and I prayed repeatedly for a, I don't know how long. Father, I want to know you the way Benny Hinn knows you. And eventually my bedroom was filled with a roaring sound. Only I could hear it. My wife continued sleeping. And then this pressure blanketed me into the bed for what felt like 20 minutes. And I woke up the next morning and my secretary arrived at work in tears. Her brother had just committed suicide. And I took her hands and I started praying for her. And this like an electric current flowed through my arms. And she looked at me wide-eyed and said, what's that? I said, that's the spirit of, of Yah. And she had complete peace. And that was when I started to pray for people. People got healed. I started to prophesy significantly. And that continued for a couple of years until, as I say, brutal divorce, treacherous wife. Church turned against me because they didn't bother to check the facts. And I lost my anointing. And I've had other anointings, but I've never regained that anointing. And I desire it for you. So in conclusion, being filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah and walking in power and authority is what we were all created for. So I encourage you to go for it. You can go so far with Yah based on head knowledge
You only really start to get close to Yah when you are really filled with His Spirit. I can't stress that enough. That is the big opportunity if you're a believer. And if you're not a believer, I suggest you start believing right now. There's a prayer at the end of this broadcast that I'll lead you in. And then immediately ask to be filled with the Spirit. And in a couple of years, you can come to a place where you do greater works than you sure did. We're going to continue with Article 2024-0204, Experiencing the Anointing. How does it manifest? <clears throat> the anointing, what is it? Why seek it? How does it manifest? Be aware of the possibility of the supernatural in you and through you. I've recently become acutely aware of the reality that very few people have deep experience of the anointing, let alone understand it. For example, the TV drama, The Chosen, which is all about Yahushua and his 12 chosen ones, disciples, followers, completely misses the point as far as the anointing is concerned. I write fairly regularly about the anointing, but it has occurred to me that I've been assuming that readers know what I'm talking about. See, particularly 2021-0110, a challenge for you to seek a power anointing in ministry. And 2022-0904, things that destroy the anointing. So I'm going to talk in a bit of detail about what the anointing is, how it works, how it manifests. Talk a little bit more about how you can receive it. So what is the anointing? The anointing is the infilling of a true believer who has requested it, the set-apart spirit of the Almighty. Now there's a, a caveat there. There are stories in the Bible, particularly in the book of Acts, of people, and yeah, particularly in the book of Acts, of people who were filled with the spirit of Yah without asking. The first people who got spilled, filled with the spirit of Yah, other than Yeshua, didn't even know that it was possible. The anointing may be imparted on immersion or so-called baptism, not a dab of water and a sign of a cross on the forehead, under the water in a body of clean water. It may be imparted at any time by requesting infilling. And once you've got an initial filling, you can continually ask for more and for more and for more. The more you worship, the more it grows, the more you spend time with Father, the more it grows. It's making love to Father. He is pouring out His Spirit on you in response to your evidence of love toward Him. There's an article on the website, Worship is Making Love to Father. You're going to get insulted and offended and what have you, but that's the truth. Ephesians 5, I think it's 32 and 33 <clears throat> For this reason, a man will leave his mother and father and cleave unto his woman, and the two shall become flesh. But this is a great mystery, but I speak regarding the anointing of the Spirit of Yah and the body of believers. Sexual lovemaking is a metaphor for making love to Father in worship. If you don't understand how sacred sexual lovemaking is, you won't fully understand how sacred worship is. The anointing can be destroyed by anger, by fear, by betrayal, by a divided house, and any other occurrence that has satanic and or demonic connections. It can wane if one ceases to worship and spend time with Father. It can be lost if one joins sexually to another who is not also anointed. Folks, Joining yourself to an unbeliever, it's like pulling the plug. Yah cannot coexist with a person who is a sinner and an unbeliever. So you make a choice. Once you're anointed, you only marry if you can find the right person who is a strong believer as strong a believer as you are. The anointing can be destroyed by major sin. 
and particularly by repeated willful sin. If you've been told you're sinning and you don't listen, you will lose the anointing. Not to mention if you keep at it, you'll lose your salvation. Father hates rebellion. He hates repeated disobedience because it traumatizes him. The anointing is a precious jewel, a pearl of great price to be treasured and nurtured. The anointing is fundamentally an outworking of intense worship of and dedication to Yah. See the Article 7 components in Drawing Close to Yah, which I mentioned a few minutes ago, for a detailed discussion of the actions that will enable you to draw close to Yah. The anointing can be boosted at the right time by asking Father to import part of an anointing comparable to that of a servant of Yah that you esteem, either modern or ancient. I discussed this in quite a bit of detail just now. At the extreme, if you are fairly mature and you're fairly strong in your faith and fairly strong in the Spirit, <clears throat> you can go so far as to say, Father Yah, I desire to know you the way that Yahushua knew you. I ask you to move through me in the way you move through Yahushua. You have the potential. You, not the person left, right, front, back, whatever. You have the potential to become a mighty servant on earth within a couple of years, if you take my message seriously. Why should you seek the anointing? You should seek the anointing if you are truly committed to serving Yah and desire to get as close to Him as possible. If you desire to have a material impact on the earth, you should seek the anointing. Be aware of the possibility of the supernatural in you and through you. This is available to you if you seek it earnestly. If you desire supernatural wisdom led by the Spirit of Yah, supernatural favor with people, supernatural energy, the ability to heal others, the ability to do great works, things that you've read about, you should seek the anointing. How does the anointing manifest? <clears throat> The manifestation of the anointing is specific to each individual and their specific relationship with Yah. It can include, but is not limited to, and in no particular order. Supernatural wisdom answers to every question. You can go into meetings without any idea of what you're going to say, and it will come to you during the meeting. You can sit down to write about something I, I regularly write articles about things that I know nothing about until I actually start writing the article, and it just comes to me. Utterance without preparation. Going to a meeting of any sort, ranging from a ministry discussion to a business consultation to a legal matter with no preparation, and yet speak with wisdom and authority, have answers to every question, including relating to things that you have no prior knowledge of. Supernatural boldness and confidence, and I'm not talking about pride. An assurance that you know what you're doing. Increasing dialogue with you. <clears throat> you hear him increasingly clearly and are increasingly able to engage in dialogue with him. Regarding your relationship with him, his ways and will on the earth, your work, your family, your hobbies, your ministry, etc., he desires to be included in every facet of your life. <clears throat> Led by the Spirit of Yah in every aspect of your life, things just come together in ways that you could not anticipate. You meet people who can help you, who seem to appear from nowhere. Divine appointments become a routine part of your life. You have a clear view of where you're going and what your life purpose is, and so forth. Supernatural favor with people. Everyone you deal with is friendly and helpful. Supernatural energy. You've bound this energy. You only need three or four hours sleep, and you awake refreshed and full of energy for the day. Supernatural peace. You have great confidence that Yah is watching over you, and that nothing bad will happen to you, and that you have a clear direction. <clears throat> Supernatural protection. 
you're absolutely confident that you have messengers, angels encamped around you to protect you. In the unlikely event that you do have a motor vehicle or other accident, you emerge unscathed, your messengers protect you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in unrighteous judgment is refuted. Supernatural joy, nothing gets you down. You're joyful in the knowledge of your relationship with your supernatural health. Nothing affects your health detrimentally. On the, the, issue, the issue of protection, you need to understand judgment. If you get into sin, you may get judged in this life, which means you might have a motor car accident. You might get very ill or something else really unpleasant might happen to you. That is not Yah taking his hand off you, although that can happen too if you get too rebellious and too proud and, 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 and so forth. But something goes wrong. It shouldn't go wrong because you're supposed to have supernatural protection. And he can withdraw that protection if you're in sin. Folks, it's a, it's a fundamental issue. Yah abhors sin. If you want to get close to Yah, you need to get good at not sinning. And if you do slip and sin, repent like that. Going on for days and days and days and days, clinging to your sin, no matter how convinced you are that you're right, is extremely damaging. Supernatural provision, your increased wisdom, energy and favor, enable you to command a better job, create your own business and do other things that enable you to prosper over time. The ability to heal others, you lay hands on people and speak the will of Yah in their lives and they're instantly healed. You know the will of Yah in your life, and as you mature, you know His will on earth, and you pray it into existence. You're given messages to others, and their response demonstrates the accuracy of your message. In an advanced level, it is possible for Yah to speak through you using your vocal cords. I once had the experience, I was up in Malawi, and uh, I met with three gentlemen there, um, they were all very committed believers. I'd ministered with them for a couple of days. Yah had moved powerfully through me. And uh, various things had happened. I was tired. I'd been ministering, fled out for a couple of days. And uh, we sat down and... Uh, Father said to me, tell them to move the coffee table out of the way. I'm going to and go and speak to this man. So I went up to this man that I'd only met an hour before. He was in his living room. And I asked one of the other men to move the coffee table out of the way. And I put up my hand towards this man and he just fell. I didn't touch him. Just the power of Yah flowing through me knocked him to the floor. I knelt down next to him with my hand over him and Yah started to speak through me. And he spoke through me for, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour, and told this man a whole lot of things about what he was planning to do for him in his life. Eventually I got up, I went to the next man, the same thing happened. I raised my arm towards him, didn't touch him, boom, out he went, knelt down, Again, Yah spoke through me. Same with the third man. Sat down, spoken to all three of them, and Yah started to speak to me through my own voice. The only control I had in all three of those, four of those situations, was that I could have kept my mouth shut. I had absolutely no intellectual engagement with what came out of my mouth. That's what's possible if you're really close to Yah. And if you read the books of good news, the so-called gospels, another meaningless religious word. 
If you read the books of good news of Yeshua, the anointed of Yah, Jesus Christ, uh, meaningless words, you will, uh, with the insight that I've just given you, you will understand how, in some cases, Yah spoke through Yeshua in the first person. When he spoke through me in Malawi, he spoke in the first person. But I understood that it was him speaking, not me. And I believe that those men understood that it was Yah speaking, not me. But I never checked with them, so I don't know. But that's what's possible. I've been there, done that. I know. It grieves me deeply that I lost it. And it can't be restored. Be careful who you covenant with. This is a pearl of great price. I encourage you to think, to seek it. Father Yah, I ask you to fill me with your spirit. I ask you to pour out your spirit upon me. There are, <clears throat> in the last week's broadcast on uh, prayers on, on first belief, there's a whole lot of things you can do, anointing, full body anointing, um, immersion, etc. It'll help with us. Next week, we'll look at prayer on realizing you've neglected the Creator. You are the attorney self-existing. So I want to close by asking you, what is the state of your relationship with the Almighty Creator? I'd like to ask you to critically examine where you are relative to Him. Do you talk to Him constantly throughout the day and allow Him to lead you in every possible way? Do you worship Him at every opportunity? Have you clearly and unambiguously heard Him call you friend? If not, you're failing in your life purpose and you'll be bitterly disappointed when you die. If you've now come to belief, please pray along the following lines. Father Yah, I come to you in the name of Yahushua. I now believe that you exist. I confess my sin of unbelief and repent of my unbelief and I ask you to forgive my sin. I now commit my life to you and I ask you to take me by the hand and lead me into deep relationship with you. I ask you to fill me with your spirit and to change me and help me to become the person you want me to become. I ask you to help me find people who can help me and help me find books, websites, articles, and other resources that will help me. I ask you to show me what I can do to actively serve you and lead others to deep personal relationship with you. I thank you for saving me. There's a period of eight days from sincerely coming to belief for the first time during which there is extreme grace to help you. See the article, Critical Actions on First Belief, for actions you should take immediately. Drop me an email at james at endtimeissueministries.org so I can help you, pray with you, counsel you, etc. And I want to stress, folks, he will meet you wherever you are now, whoever you are, wherever you come from, wherever you are now. Even if you're an outright Satanist, he wants you to become his friend. So in closing, thank you for listening. Please send me your questions to james at endtimeissueministries.org. Please email me to join the mailing list at james at endtimeissueministries.org. If you decide to draw close to the Almighty, please let me know and I can connect with you by Skype, Zoom, Teams, email or telephone so that I can help you with your journey or on, on WhatsApp as well. I hope to connect with you again next week when I will continue to explore how to become a friend of the Creator. Work with me to make a way for Yahushua to return in victory at the end of the millennium and make his enemies his footstool. As I've just said, it doesn't matter who you are now, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, tall or short, thin or fat, African, Asian, European, Caucasian, American, Indian, it doesn't matter. Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, yoga, Hindu, Satanist, witch, warlock, it doesn't matter. He will meet you wherever you are and he wants you to become his friend. 
Forget about they're the chosen race or he's the this or what's the that. Or <clears throat> you don't have to come through the pastor. You don't have to come through the priest. You don't have to come through the evangelist. You go directly to him. You don't need to come through me. I got a, a WhatsApp message earlier today from a guy connected with on um, got referred to me in South Sudan. He said, do you have a church in South Sudan? I said, no, I don't, and you don't need one. You can go directly to Father. So, folks, if you've been with me for a while, I'm going to say good night. If this is your first or second time on the channel, I'm going to ask you to stay behind, and I've got a little bit of information to share with you. To those who are leaving, good night. In closing, who am I? James Robertson. I have a doctorate in engineering, and I'm a retired military commander. I now work as a management consultant and project manager. I have over 31 years experience of actively seeking to draw close to the Almighty, following a dramatic encounter with him on the 12th of March 1993, when he spoke to me audibly in a locked room and I knew for certain that he was real. In learning about Father, I applied my deep-seated aversion to failure born out of an accident in early childhood, coupled to my engineering and military training of rigor and preventing failure, to my seeking of knowledge about Father. This journey led to numerous supernatural experiences, prayers answered, and clear communication with the Creator that forms the basis for what I teach in these programs. See the video, Why Seek Relationship, for an overview of what I believe. Please visit my website, www.endtimeissueministries.org, for much more information. The ETI version of the Bible with a correction of key translation errors is on the ETI Bible version page near the top of the website. For recordings of nearly all of the teachings broadcast so far, search on Google for, quote, Relationship with Creator Radio, unquote. There are about four podcast websites with all the back issues. Back issues are also available uh, associated with the transcripts under the transcripts of broadcasts page. Books with teachings from 1998 till May 2019 are available at the Books for Printing page. They're all formatted with covers ready for printing. PDF documents. I publish regular email articles. Email me on james at endtimeissueministries.org to be added to the list or to seek counsel or prayer or give me feedback. Visit the website and use the Google search, article keyword cloud, table of contents, and article search to locate the information you're looking for. Folks, that is, that's it. I'm out of time. I'm going to say good night. I hope to see you again next week. Thank you so much. Father, I come to you, lifting up my hands. By your grace I stand, just because you love me, I know Hi, I'm James Robertson. I want to ask you what you know about being filled with the Spirit of the Creator to empower you and give you wisdom and many other gifts. Also, what do you know about the Almighty Creator of the heavens and the earth? If you're not aware of the anointing of the Spirit of the Creator, then please listen to my broadcast on W4CY.com Internet Radio or Talk4TV.com Internet TV. Also visit my website at www.endtimeissueministries.org or email me on james at endtimeissueministries.org to find out more. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you.